President, the university community has assembled for commencement. Thank you. Good morning. On a behalf of Washington's premier and proudly publicly purposed university, I welcome you to these ceremonies celebrating what is our top priority, the academic attainment of our students. For the fun and the flair they add to today's ceremony, please join me in thanking the members of the Bellingham Pipe Band. The flags in the procession and along the back wall, including those of sovereign Indian nations, represent the origins and educational experiences of our graduates and Western's global reach. Please remain standing for the Star Spangled Banner. We will be led in singing by Western Washington University music performance major Veronica Jensen. Please be seated. This is the happiest time of the year on our campus. We mark the importance of the day with the solemnity of centuries old ritual. And we celebrate. We celebrate because today, like no other, captures why we are here and why we so enjoy being here. We celebrate first and foremost, of course, the graduates of whom we are all so proud. Commencement is about the graduates, to be sure. But it is also about the values, the commitments, and above all, the people whose dedication make this moment possible. While we'll be getting to the graduates in a bit, I do ask you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey as we first celebrate the many dimensions by which graduation is a community and not just an individual achievement. Over the past 111 years, Western Washington University has conferred more than 103,000 degree degrees. Today, we add 600 more. <laughs> Although we only give diplomas to the graduates today, there are many who share their accomplishments. Please join me as we recognize those who've made possible the achievements of today's graduates. First, I ask that parents, including step-parents and guardians of our graduates, stand and remain standing so that your graduating sons and daughters may show their appreciation for your guidance and support. <laughs> we 
Now remain standing, remain standing and be joined by grandparents, great-grandparents, spouses and sons and daughters of the graduates. Please also stand. And finally, aunts, uncles, neighbors, friends, and all others who've helped make this day possible. Thank you, you may be seated. There is, of course, one very special group who deserve particular recognition. Our graduates are widely recognized for their active minds, changing lives, because they learn side by side with the very best faculty and staff. Will the faculty and staff, including Emeritus and Emerita, please rise. Thank you. And I add my personal thanks to this outstanding group of dedicated and caring mentors and teachers. In key leadership positions included with me on the platform today are our trustees, community leaders who on behalf of you, the citizens of Washington, generously donate guidance and direction for your Western Washington University. The trustees present, and I'd ask them to stand, are Dick Thompson of Olympia, Pay and Peggy Zorro, and Jacob Whitish of Bellingham. They look forward to congratulating you when you receive your diplomas. <laughs> Officers of the university on the platform today, and I ask them to stand as I read their names, are Dr. Catherine Reardon, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Stephanie Bowers, Vice President for University Advancement, Steve Swan, Vice President for University Relations, and Dr. Eileen Coughlin, Senior Vice President and Vice President for Enrollment and Student Services. <laughs> the deans on the platform today are Acting Dean of the Graduate School and Vice Provost for Research, Kathleen Kiddo, Dean of Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies, Dr. Roger Gilman, Dean of the College of Business and Economics, Dr. Brian Burton. Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. Brent Carvajal. Dean of the College of Fine and Performing Arts, Dr. Daniel Gayet. Dean of Huxley College of the Environment, Dr. Bradley Smith. Dean of the College of Sciences and Technology, Dr. Jeff Wright. And D Dean of the College of Wood, Dean of Woodring College of Education, Dr. Francisco Rios. And Dean of Libraries, Mr. Christopher Cox. The mace from, from medieval times symbolizes the university's authority to confer degrees and so appropriately is borne by one of our senior most faculty members, Dr. George Kriz, who has served this university with distinction for 44 years. The leader of our commencement procession, the University Marshal, is also appropriately the leader of our outstanding faculty. To bring you greetings on behalf of the faculty, I present Dr. Karen Stout, President of the Faculty Senate, Professor Stout. President Shepard, members of the Board of Trustees, family and friends of the graduates, I welcome you on behalf of the faculty of Western Washington University to the 2012 winter commencement. And to the graduates, to the graduates. I'm honored to welcome you to this ceremony, which in every way is designed to celebrate you, your accomplishments, and your membership as alumni to Western Washington University. Enjoy the pomp and circumstance of this day, for this cultural tradition is rich with symbolism. For over a thousand years, ceremonies like this have taken place. What an amazing thing to think about. The regalia we wear today is rooted in cultural traditions that are 700 to 800 years old. While universities have clearly grown and changed, this ritual reminds us of our communal linkages to each other across time and space. Today, 
you become a member of that community. Enjoy the pomp and circumstance of this day, for this rite of passage is designed to celebrate you and your transition from being students to being alumni. Western Washington University faculty, staff, and administrators celebrate you. We believed in you enough to welcome you into our community, and now we believe in you enough to send you out into the world as one of our own. Enjoy the pomp and circumstance of this day as you sit with and celebrate with your friends. You shared experiences inside and outside of the classroom. You learned so much together and because of each other. So celebrate with your friends today, but remember those who have gone ahead of you and those who remain behind, because they are rooting for you too. Enjoy the pomp and circumstance of this day, for it celebrates your family. Because if you haven't figured it out yet, today is their day too. They lifted you up to get you to this day, and they have a stake in your accomplishments. And they deserve some recognition too. And I know they want to celebrate. Right, family? Enjoy the pomp and circumstance of this day, for it has been designed by a team of event planners who want you to enjoy the celebration for the revelry that it is, a celebration of you. Collectively, we all have worked hard to be in this place right here, right now, celebrating you graduates. Enjoy every minute of it. On behalf of the faculty at Western Washington University, congratulations. Thank you, Professor Stout. Western proudly exists as a manifestation of the vision and the values of the people of the state of Washington. From Washington's earliest days, our tax-paying citizens have supported their belief in public higher education and in you, our graduates, as the pathway for continually brighter futures for all. The people of Washington own guide and govern Western, their university, through a citizen board of trustees. To bring you greetings on behalf of the board of trustees is trustee Peggy Zorro. Good morning, graduates, family and friends of graduates and distinguished guests. I bring you greetings on behalf of Western Washington University Board of Trustees and the people of the state of Washington. As you likely know, it is the governor and through her the citizens of our great state that appoint a citizen board of trustees who then, as volunteers, steward the legacy of this great university. Speaking on behalf of my board colleagues here today, Dick Thompson and your student trustee, Jacob Whitish, it is a great honor to serve in this role and a responsibility that we take very, very seriously. In addition to congratulating you on your tremendous achievement, I would also like to give you a charge from the people of Washington. With their tax dollars, they have invested in your future so that you may develop your talents and follow your aspirations, not only for your own benefit, but for the benefit of our statewide community as well. Today marks a momentous transition in your lives, the start of a brand new chapter in your independence, empowerment, and self-determination. It also marks the beginning of your opportunity and your responsibility to contribute to the social, economic, and cultural health of our state. As you embark on the exciting personal and professional journeys that lie ahead, remember, the pride that the people of Washington take in your success. As well, and it goes without saying, for it is the Western way. Relish the responsibility that then follows you as you think beyond yourself in using the gifts you have been given. On behalf of your Western Washington University trustees, congratulations and best wishes for all of your endeavors. Thank you.
Thank you, Trustee Zorro. Ms. Bethany Fromong is your class speaker. The Provost Selection Committee chose Bethany for this honor from a group of outstanding candidates nominated by our academic programs. Bethany, the daughter of Clark and Tricia Fromong of Enumclaw, has played a critical role in theater productions at Western, in Bellingham, and beyond. She has spent much of her time behind the scenes, collaborating to design the artistic stage sets for performances of Tartuffe and The Jungle Book, among others. This past fall, she recreated the Antarctic landscape as the scenic and artistic director of Terra Nova. She was recently selected to present her design concept for Terra Nova at the Kennedy Center American College Festival. In addition to working backstage, Bethany managed the production of several shows as head house manager of Western's Performing Arts Center for the past two years. On top of her academic career, she has juggled up to four jobs at once and has volunteered as an usher at the Upfront Theater in Bellingham. After graduating, Bethany plans to work in theater in Bellingham or on cruise ships. She will do this this summer. She will be the scenic designer for West, also be this summer, she will also be the scenic designer for Western's production of Seussical, a musical based, of course, on the books of Dr. Seuss. Please welcome your class speaker, Bethany Fromont. Thank you, family, friends, faculty, staff, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2012 for this unforgettable opportunity to speak to you today. When I was offered this opportunity a quarter, a quarter ago, I can safely say that I was quite shocked, not just for the opportunity, but because it was presented with this honor in front of the whole entire theater history class, and the whole entire class, and cheering and supporting with all that they could say was, all I could say was thanks, and think, well, I guess there's no way of getting out of this now. Now, although I'm graduating with a degree in theater, I am no way a performer and typically leave the spotlight to my acting peers. In fact, my first encounter with the performing arts was in middle school. I had just moved to a new town, knew no one, and got placed in the drama class that nobody wanted to take. For me, I was petrified and upset, and I went running to the main office to speak with my aunt who worked there, and she told me, and I'm begging to get out of this class. She told me, I will not get you out, and you're gonna do it. So I did. And now I stand in front of you to receive my degree in theater with a focus in design. And I still, and, but now I can tell you, I still go running and crying anytime I have to perform. All those crazy actors want me to partake in their warm up before a good show. But no matter how much you grow up, some things just never change. It took me quite a while to decide what I wanted to speak about this morning. I thought for weeks about the possibilities about how to, go, how to go about where I came today, what opportunities have presented themselves along my long educational journey. I even watched individual other individual speeches, a ton of them in fact. In these speeches, I saw a common formula. Some adventures, some adventures in the speaker's lives, whether it be skydiving or going on mission trips to help a developing nation, was a catalyst to help them succeed in, the, in college. While these moments and experiences are important, there's no denying that I think we overlook the most important thing, the small moments. The night spent working on the group project so late in the evening until the library kicked you out, only to end up with the shoot together eating the prize and discussing how you're gonna celebrate the project being over. It's the people who helped you in those small ways to get to this moment. I wouldn't be here today without those people and without those small moments. I bet most of you out there today owe a similar debt to the people in your lives. Things to think about, our favorite TV shows and movies. The long list of people that are amongst those credits that we find to keep, that we find are our cue to either exit the theater or to change the channel. The work that those actors and tech teams do together is the reasons, gives us our reasons to procrastinate on those papers we had to write. The acceptance committee for deciding that it was the best decision to allow for us our four, five, or even some six years of unforgettable memories, and most importantly, the opportunity to better ourselves as individuals. Our friends and roommates that help celebrate momentous occasions of success, finishing a midterm, having a sold out open house, or when you turned 21 and made sure that you had a good time. Our families that gave us advice on handling what we associate as real world situations, for some of us, if not most of us, emptying their pockets to help support our independency. 
Our faculty and advisors for always being there to help our, answer our questions and concerns, to talk about our successes and failures and make sure that we're getting our stuff done to be able to walk across the stage today. I asked my fellow theater folk if they could give any advice to the graduating class and what would it be? As most of you may be able to guess, 99% of the answers were quite funny, but highly inappropriate. <laughs> I did receive one piece from an advisor that in order to survive in any scene, keep these things in mind. Listen, say yes, live in the moment, and make sure you play with people that have your back. Make big choices early and often. Don't, st don't start a scene where, to where people are talking about jumping out of the plane. Start the scene having already jumped. If you're scared, look into your partner's eyes. You'll feel better. This advice came in handy recently as I was asked to attend the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival in, to help assist with the remount of the advice piece Us and to submit my scenic design for Terra Nova. I had to put together a design presentation and pu be publicly critiqued in front of my peers and fellow designers from other schools. My nerves got the best of me. I had a couple of peers from Western the presentation and they kept telling me it's gonna be fine, you're gonna do great. With a stomach full of butterflies and palms sweating, I got next to my design board, looked into my friend's eyes and was finally able to re relax because I knew no matter what happened, they were there to support me and I had gone outside of my comfort zone to better myself. If there's one thing I can tell you, it is this. Do not do it alone. As you navigate through the rest of your life, be open to collaboration. Other people and other people's ideas are often better than your own. Find a group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them and it will change your life. No one is here today because they were on their own. If you're all here today, you were all here today because someone gave you the strength, helped you, helped you get here, and that should make you feel less alone and less scared. You never know what is around the corner unless you, take, unless you peek. Besides, it's much more fun to succeed and fail with other people. You can blame them when things go wrong. <laughs> Thank you again for asking me to speak today. As you head out in the next act of your life, I wish you love, joy, much laughter. Break a leg. Thank you, Bethany, for those stirring words. Commencement is a time to celebrate enduring traditions. At Western, ours is the tradition of making a difference, of being the difference. Today, we honor that tradition through the President's Award, made in recognition of exemplary contributions to service and the university's commitment to be making that difference. The President's Award goes to the Hagen family representing this large family, I ask to come forward and join me here. Uh, Rick and Sylvia Hagen, Mark and Mary King, Mark and Mary and Frank King, and Andy and Michael Ann Hagen. Please come forward. I ask the Provost Reardon to step forward to assist me in making the award. Since they opened their first grocery store in Bellingham in 1933, the Hagen family name has been synonymous with supporting the community, from supporting student athletes and youth organizations to funding critical health care needs, the Hagen family has been extraordinarily generous with their resources of time and funds and leadership. The tradition of community service began with the late Ben and Dorothy Hagen, who founded the grocery store chain that grew to become one of the largest privately held businesses in the state of Washington. Dorothy volunteered countless hours making items to sell in the gift shop at the former St. Luke's Hospital. They passed that spirit of service to their children, Don and his wife Kathy, Rick and his wife Sylvia, and Don and Rick's sister Mary King and her husband Frank. They have all continued the tradition by supporting critical community organizations with substantial contributions of resources and leadership. Sadly, Don Hagen passed away this past year. Representing Don and his wife Kathy today are his son Andy and daughter-in-law Michael Ann. At Western, the Hagen 
and King families have touched the lives of numerous students through contributions to scholarships and through their leadership roles in the Western Washington University Foundation. The Hagans are longtime supporters of Viking athletics and have endowed many scholarships for student athletes. The Kings established an endowment for our Wade King Student Recreation Center in memory of their son and brother, who that, that, that institution, of course, now enhancing the lives of so many students every day. In the greater community, the Hagans have provided crucial financial support for St. Joseph's Medical Center's Emergency Department, the Hannah Aquatic Center, and the Bellingham Campaign for the Arts. The Kings were instrumental in helping build the Wade King Elementary School, and members of both families participate in multiple community groups and leadership boards. The St. Joseph's Hospital Foundation, Whatcom Hospice, the Whatcom Humane Society, the Boy Scouts, and the Whatcom County YMCA, just to name a few. And now with the third generation of Hagans and Kings stepping into leadership roles, Whatcom County can continue to expect the Hagan name to be behind much of what makes Whatcom County and Western Washington University great places to be. The President's Award is symbolized by the presentation of an original piece of art Christopher Morrison has captured in the glass, the spirit of the award, the spirit that epitomizes what is special about Western, the spirit of giving back. In recognition of their leadership, loyalty, high achievement, and great generosity, Western Washington University proudly bestows, bestows upon the Hagen family and the King family the President's Award, our highest public honor. Thank you. Today, we honor another enduring tradition by presenting an honorary do doctorate degree from Western Washington University made in recognition of exemplary contributions to humankind. I invite Mr. Timothy Egan to please come forward. Dean Carbajal and Dean Smith, please step forward to assist me in the awarding of the degree. As a young man growing up in the Pacific Northwest, Tim Egan discovered two great passions, a love of the written word and a reverence for the epic natural and human landscapes of the American West. Those twin springs of inspiration have produced a body of work that brings to life the ancient relationships between people and the land and deepens our appreciation of the lessons the past can teach us about living well in the future. It was fitting, Tim, that you began your, got your big break in journalism as you were covering the Exxon Valdez oil spill in 1989, sitting in a fisherman's spare bedroom while writing for the, West, for the front page of the New York Times every day is something you were made to do. Since then, you have won acclaim, reporting for the Times on a wide range of issues, sharing a Pulitzer Prize in 2001 for your work on the series How Race is Lived in America. As a regular columnist for the Times online newspaper, you provide our nation a distinctly Western perspective on American life. As a regular contributor to the BBC radio, you represent that perspective to the world. Your extraordinary talent for combining deep research with compelling human narratives is also on display in your critically acclaimed books. 
your national award-winning work about the American Dust Bowl, The Worst Hard Time, is history at its most engaging. It masterfully tells a story of America's greatest environmental catastrophe through the daily lives, hopes, and struggles of ordinary people. Likewise, your book, The Big Burn, describes the rise of the Forest Service from the ashes of our nation's greatest wildfire and the famous and not so famous individuals who helped shape the conversation about land use in the West that continues to this day. Tim lives in Seattle with his wife, Joni Balter, a political columnist and editor for the Seattle Times who joins with him here today. For your award-winning contributions to the literary legacy of the West and the national dialogue on issues ranging from race to politics, it is our great privilege to honor you this morning. On the recommendation of the faculty of Western Washington University and by the authority vested in me by our Board of Trustees and in conformity with the laws of the State of Washington, I confer upon you the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the responsibilities, privileges, and honors thereto pertaining. Congratulations. <laughs> the deans will provide your program. I'm also very pleased to announce that Tim agreed to be your commencement speaker, Dr. Egan. Now I can get that dinner reservation when I say this is Dr. Egan calling to <laughs> table for four. Thank you, President Shepard and Brad and Brent and conferring this honorary doctorate on me. Though in all due respect, I'm reminded of this wonderful scene from the movie The King's Speech, which last year, you may recall, won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Remember in the movie, the voice coach, a gentleman named Lionel Logue, will not accept pretense or title. He calls the Prince Bertie instead of Your Royal Highness. And in the best line of the film, he dismisses the doctors who've been giving the Prince royal advice. Among the advice of those doctors is, smoke more cigarettes. It'll help with the stuttering. So the voice coach Lionel Logue says of those doctors, they're idiots. And the prince says, but they've all been knighted. And Logue says, well, that makes it official. <laughs> so with this honor, count me among the knighted idiots. <laughs> and glad of it, I should say. <laughs> Graduates, parents, administrators, teachers, students, family and friends, Vikings, welcome all. And most important, congratulations. You did it. You did it through the worst economic times in 70 years. I wrote a book called The Worst Hard Times. This is the second worst hard times. And you did it during that time. And unlike my honorary degree, which I am indeed truly honored to receive, you will all be getting real degrees. So yours means something. Mine is the scarecrow equivalent of getting a brain and a diploma. <laughs> also, I want you parents, since I'm a parent of two kids, to take a bow as well. But um, a word of caution here. If your parents this weekend have spent too much time recalling their own glory days in college when they were in their early 20s and running around the campus of their choice, just remember the wonderful words of Mark Twain who said, some of my best memories are things that never happened. <laughs> Today, as most of you know, and if you don't, you will now, or you will tonight, is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> to an Irish American such as myself, this is much, much more than a national holiday, an excuse, of course, to drink Jameson's for breakfast. <laughs> This is a time to marvel about how a tiny nation produced so many terrific writers, so many wonderful wordsmiths, a nation smaller than the state of Oregon with barely two million people. 
One of those great writers was George Bernard Shaw, and he said this, an Irishman's heart is nothing but his imagination. And since the Irish had nothing but their imagination, that's why I think in part they were such terrific writers. So using George Bernard Shaw's line as a jump off point, I've tried to come up with a few words that will live, that will outlive today's sunset. And I'm hoping you'll see the sunset today too. <laughs> And you know, graduation speakers are supposed to give advice, and I've never felt qualified to give advice. It took me, I'm pained to admit, seven years to get my bachelor's degree. There was a, uh, a change in majors, and I think a girl was involved as well. A <laughs> um, little bit of the John Belushi plan, but after seven years I did get my degree. So I'm willing to pass on advice from others, though not necessarily my advice. Others much smarter than I, but I have tested each of these admonitions I'm going to give you here in a few minutes. The first, failure is an option. That's one of the great things about the Pacific Northwest. That is why we have room to fail, which means room to succeed which is why there are so many creative, positive success stories in this part of the country. We don't care what people think. We're willing to say, why not? The great failures produced by our region include Steve Jobs, who was a Reed College dropout, and Bill Gates, who was a Harvard dropout. And why did Starbucks start here? Why did Jeff Bezos bring Amazon.com here when he had a choice to bring it any other place? Why was Costco hatched in our backyard? Because this is a place that gives people room to fail. This is a place that is forgiving and ultimately in that room is creative. As an aside, I should say as a writer that I could never write in a good climate. <laughs> the gray days feed the imagination. Very Irish. Second, find some time every day to do what your heart desires and not just what you have to do. If you're lucky, at some point, the two will converge. A friend of mine in college, he gave up his computer programming major and a sure job and decided to become an expert in West African music. He loved the music, it was his passion. He would bore us endlessly with his talk of all the things he picked up about different types of West African music. Everyone said, what? You're never going to get a job. You're going to waste all your time in college for this West African music? Well, when he got out of school, this was 20 odd years ago, he got hired by Microsoft. It turned out the company needed one person in America with knowledge of West African music <laughs> for their audio encyclopedia they were putting together. I should say he is one of the Microsoft millionaires that lives smugly all over Seattle. <laughs> So as Steve Jobs said, your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Third, have, excuse me, regrets. Have a few, but don't let them cripple you. And not just those ones on your Facebook page that you should know if you don't now, that every future employer is going to ask you about. <laughs> those pictures of you drinking tequila out of someone's navel, they'll, they'll, they'll actually see that picture. <clears throat> I have some regrets. When I was in college, I wrote a column for the school newspaper praising cynicism. I said the world needed more cynics. But now I know better. Skepticism is good. Cynicism is poison. It's poison in a marriage. It's poison at work. It's far, far better to be curious. My mother passed away recently, just two months ago. She was a wonderful woman, a great writer and reader in her own right, and an artist. And just before she died, she had terminal brain cancer. She said, I'm not afraid, Tim. I said, why? She said, I have no regrets. I think it's a wonderful goal to die without regrets. Fourth, a corollary to that, grudges, let them go. I was a long festering feud with someone I'd met in college and intensely disliked. I can't use the colloquialism I used for him. But the feud was going on 20 years, and then one day I decided to let it go. I saw my enemy at a party, and I said, you know, you and I should just make up. We should just forget about this whole useless feud thing and let it go. And he looked at me, genuinely puzzled, his face quizzical, and he said, 
oh, have we been in a feud? <laughs> I didn't notice. I guess I was the one in the feud. So it turns out my feud was futile. Now, I will make one exception to this rule on grudges. Literary feuds. Norman McLean, the great author of A River Runs Through It, took a very long time to get his first book published. It was called A River Runs Through It. It later starred Brad Pitt in the movie. He was 70 years old when it was finally published. It's a masterpiece. It's beautiful. It was a beautifully written novella I've ever read. But he couldn't get it published. It was rejected by everyone. All the major publishers. Finally, if small university press, no criticism of university press, of course, but university press brought out a river runs through it and it sold more than 20 million copies. He got his revenge when one of those publishers who had rejected him wrote him and saying, we'll publish anything you write. It doesn't matter. Scribble on a napkin. Vomit on a, on a placemat. We'll publish anything you want. McLean wrote him back and said this. If you were the last publisher on earth, and I the last writer, that, sir, would be the end of books. <laughs> so that's my literary exception for feuds. <laughs> Fifth, keep a core group of friends, for they will stick with you through all the trendy acquaintances, all those shallow electronic digital friends they will stick with you through ups and downs, but friendship requires work and imagination. You have to nourish those friendships. When I was 21, the age of some of you graduating, unfortunately, I lost my two best friends in life, two guys I'd known since high school, and they died one month apart in different car accidents. I was absolutely devastated. There was a whole, huge, huge hole in my life, which lasted most of a decade. But from the deaths of these two best friends of mine, I learned to appreciate friendship. And I said then, and I've tried to live up to it, that I would never, never let a friendship lapse unless, of course, it deserved to lapse. So I think that's extraordinarily important. Six, anchor yourself. We are, as Americans, a transient nation. There's more than 315 million of us Think about it, when the US started, there was about 2.7 million. There were 315 million of us. In your time here at Western, some of you have gone abroad. I learned, in fact, to truly appreciate the Pacific Northwest by going abroad and seeing this land from afar. You can live anywhere, of course, and many of you will scatter after today to far parts of the earth. I chose, after living in two other places, to come back to the Pacific Northwest, where my mother was born and died where my grandmother was born and died. Because the more I traveled, the more I realized that every place has something wrong with it. But our good days, when we have them, are better than anyone's good days. The author Wendell Berry said, you can't know who you are if you don't know where you are. So understand your place. Understand its rhythms, its history. We are shaped here today in Bellingham by the volcano of Mount Baker, by the mountain Shuxon, by the big muscular magic Skagit River. We're shaped by these islands offshore, and we are shaped by the plates beneath us that, as we all know, could move at any time. Luckily, it didn't happen in your time here. Which leads me to, don't let yourself be disconnected from the earth around you. Hibernate in winter. It's the best time for cooking those six-hour meals on Sunday. And stay up late and play in the glorious, life-giving light of summer. We are humans, but we are also warm-blooded mammals, part of this ecosystem. The only way to understand that is to stay close to the earth. Even if you don't climb Mount Shuxon or raft the Nooksack, touch the earth, stay in contact with it, Stroll along the bluffs in the dead of winter when the sky is the color of a cement basement. Feel the wind coming off the sound. Finally, know your story. I'll close on something appropriate for this St. Patrick's Day. Three years ago, I went to Ireland for the first time in my life. I took the Egan clan, eight of us, from my then 80-year-old mother to my daughter, who was a junior in college at the time, we were looking for our roots, as people do when Irish Americans go back there. And we found this extraordinarily depressing little town in County Clare. 
where my family was from, it was a day like today. It was cold, it was wind raked, rain swept, and this was a god awful depressing place. There were only two businesses in this tiny town in County Clare. I swear this is true. One of them was Egan's Pub. <laughs> and just across the street was the other sole surviving business, Egan's Books and Wine. <laughs> we had it covered. <laughs> Later that night, we were dancing to the traditional music. They'll put these signs out in front of the pubs that say trad music tonight. It's terrific. Drinking Irish whiskey and swapping pints of good Irish beer with our beloved, long lost members of our clan. And my brother turned to me, my brother Danny. We had seven kids in my family. My youngest brother was Danny. A big smile on his face. Could have been influenced by the whiskey. And he said, you know, Tim, I finally feel at home. I said, how so, Dan? He said, I'm in a nation of lyrical alcoholics. <laughs> well, it made me understand who I am to see where these people came from. And that's why I think it's important for all of us to know our story. So I hope some of this helps. With that, go forth, grads. Remember that spring days and the rest of your life are just outside the door. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Before the most important part of the ceremony begins, I have an announcement concerning photographs. Pictures of your favorite graduate will be taken by a professional photographer as the diploma is received. Photo opportunities for family and friends will be available later. Therefore, please do not obstruct the aisles at the back and the sides of the graduate seating area. Dean Kiddo will now come forward and present the master's candidates. Will the candidates for the master's degree please rise and remain standing? Right. Will the faculty please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, Dean Kiddo. I present these candidates for the master's degree upon the recommendation of their faculty advisors, thesis committees, and on behalf of our faculty, I certify that they have satisfactorily completed the course requirements for the master's degree, have met the high scholastic standards of the university, and have been approved by the Graduate Council. I present them for the conferring of their degrees. I'm pleased to receive these candidates. On the recommendation of the faculty of Western Washington University, and by the authority vested in me by our Board of Trustees, and in conformity with the laws of the State of Washington, I confer upon you the degree appropriate to the work you have completed with all of the responsibilities, privileges, and honors thereto pertaining. Congratulations. Thank you, Dean Kiddo. Dr. Elizabeth Bolin, along with major professors, will assist with the hooding. Acting Dean Kiddo will read the names of master's candidates. Will the candidates for the master's degree now proceed to the platform? The faculty may be seated.
Cheryl Lynn Reed, Master of Arts Rehabilitation Counseling. Heather Kathleen Davidson, Master of Education, Continuing and College Education. Sierra Rose Farr, Master of Arts, Rehabilitation Counseling. Yvonne Akimino Osorio, Master of Arts, Rehabilitation Counseling. Jeffrey William Brumell, Master of Arts, Anthropology. Lonnie J. Petticord, Master of Arts, Rehabilitation Counseling. <laughs> Micah Richards, Master of Science, Mental Health Counseling. <laughs> Cody Hamlin, Master of Education, Environmental Education. Philip Raymond Nadeau, Master of Science, Computer Science. <laughs> Katrina Marlene Scott, Master of Arts, Rehabilitation Counseling. <laughs> Brent Charles Greenack, Master of Education, Environmental Education. David Matthew Stritch, Master of Education, Environmental Education. Clint Owen Hensley, Master of Education, Environmental Education. Bradley Allen McCoy, Master of Science, Mathematics. Jonah Daniel White, Master of Science, Geography. Stephanie Bennett, Master of Education, Environmental Education. Please join me in congratulating these candidates who have completed their master's degree. Thank you. You may be seated. Graduates, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. The diploma you received today is a result of your hard work and, the, and your perseverance. It is a gift given to you by many. Your families, the citizens of Washington, our faculty and staff, and the many philanthropists who support the margin of excellence here at Western. Your rewards will be lifelong because you've put your active minds to changing lives. You know, for you practice it, that the most valued gift any of us have is the gift of giving back. Education becomes truly higher when put to higher purposes. Provost Rudin will join me for conferring the bachelor's degrees upon the eligible candidates. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees please rise and remain standing? <laughs> Will the faculty please rise? Mr. President. Madam Provost. I am proud to present these graduates on behalf of the faculty of Western Washington University. I recommend they be awarded the baccalaureate degree, subject, of course, to the satisfactory completion of any outstanding assignments. <laughs> <laughs> I am pleased to receive these candidates on the recommendation of the faculty of Western Washington University and by the authority vested in me by our Board of Trustees, 
and in conformity with the laws of the state of Washington, I confer upon you the degree appropriate to the work you have completed with all of the responsibilities, privileges, and honors thereto pertaining. Congratulations, you are now graduates. It is a tradition that you now move your tassel from right to left. You may be seated. We now come to that part of the program you've been waiting for for four years, or perhaps five, or... We hand to each of you a piece of our proud tradition the uniquely Western approach to higher education that is now an inseparable part of you. You may proceed to the platform to receive your diploma when called by your dean. Graduates from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, please come forward. Lucas Anthony Hartelius. Kathleen Marie Borden. Catherine Elizabeth Bates. Brittany Ann Artem. Nicholas Michael Coyle University Honors. Jeffrey David Ald. Anthony Cassins. Vanessa Lee Caudillo. Joanna Owen Magna Cum Laude. Devin Alexander Aglo. Tyson Frederick Alumba. Robert Morris Bragg III. Benjamin Michael Kieber. Jacob Mark Ferraro. Monica Anderson. Adriana D'Angelo. Lisa Herzog. Paige Eileen Armstrong. Jamie Renee Martin. Ariana C. Kane Cum Laude. Jenny Rose Blink. Zachary C. Scott. Kate Lynn Reduvo. Barton Edward Beckley. Mackenzie Jean Chambers. Amber Nicole Cremini Kay. Kayla Christine Baker. Brittany Cleary. Eric Christian DeGroot. Sarah Linehan Leister, University Honors. Leticia M. Castro Shockley. Sophia B. Blamey. Jordan Leland Jones. Valerie E. Brannon. Ashley May Berger. Thomas William Stepanski. Alicia Brianne Trosky. Yeah. James Mather. Yeah. Andrea J. Barnes. Yeah. Joshua Jordan Dobson. Jared Wortman. Andrea Lauren Parsons. Hilary Grove. Christopher David Lemley. Era Nikolai Bennett. Hannah Rose McCabe. Aaron Cruz. Cassandra Baglio. Brittany Nicole Forshaw. Lindsay M. Hook. 
Stephanie Katharina Diet Magna Cum Laude. James Christopher Michael Harold Jr. Anna Janssen Cum Laude. Jamin Agosti Cum Laude. Lucy Elizabeth Nolan. Salem De Sanctis Henry. Emily Beth Johnson. Yeah! Shannon Brooke Foley. Yeah! Aaron Lee Phillips. Yeah! Elizabeth Lewis. Yeah! Michael John Hannafin. Yeah! Emily Sarah Tripp. Yeah! Spencer Morgan Mister. Nathaniel Noble, Keatman Rose Johnston, Rolf Patterson Thorne Hartman, Kurt Quam, Daisy Torres, Jadira Rosales, Rochelle Nicole Ireland Magna Cum Laude. Stephanie Alicia Haas, Harleen Karkung, Jennifer Marie Thompson, Mary Catherine Wakefield, Kira Nicole Hayes, Fallon Kongsang, Ming Chu Hui. Corey Robert Button, Andrea C. Farrell, Christina Carmen Cria, Brianne Beats, Marianne H. Graf, Cum Laude, Amanda K. McIntosh, Jeremy P. Smith. Sarah Ann Wayman, <laughs> Kathleen Noel Marriott, <laughs> Alicia Marie Nazareth, <laughs> Gina Marie Cole Cum Laude, <laughs> William Christopher Graff, <laughs> Aaron R. Doyer, <laughs> Chelsea Lene Hilborn Magna Cum Laude, Margaret Elizabeth Harrow, Megan Joan Kendig, Ashley Gordon, Ryan James Lackman, Samantha Rutherford, Elizabeth Tamson Hanscom, Lena Marie Pickroll, Magna Cum Laude. Jessica, Jessica Marie Turek, Cum Laude. Michael Andrew Larkin, Cum Laude. Kendra Louise Pittman. Morgan R. Clinging Smith. Shiloh Timothy Smith. Carl Rollin. Matthew Andrew Heredia. Matthew Edward Peters. Moises Romero. Salisa Lachey Pointer. Manuel Torres. Nia Renee Mueller. Davina Cassandra Miller. Joshua Dustin Riley. Severin Joan Ellering. Reed Alexander Miller. Jeremy S. Jansen. Christina Noel Westman. Danielle Marie Poole. 
Castagna drum. Cassandra Lee Creer. Catherine Malin Nicely Nagel. Ashley Colleen McCulloch. Addison Rogers. Derek R. Miguel. Melanie Ann McBoyle. Rose Lee Tran. Jenna Christine Mead. Olivia Margaret Rose Lee. Elizabeth McCarter. Elaine Lenore Tweeto. Courtney Lee Shirting. Erica Shelby Bruin. Lance Gregory Malmberg. Marina Lynn Norton. Anna Lee Latham. Jessica Ann Weber. Janelle Denise Suzanne Murray. Megan Christine Cousy. Gary L. Pavone. Val Park. Kyle Andrew Mifflin. Andrew Ross Powers. Fiona Davita Rolls. Cameron Scott Cowry. Robert Christian Hartson. Jacqueline Michelle Chop. Maura Haggerty Shaw. Jonas Francis Singler. Stanley George White. Ryan B. Robinson. Haley Margaret Erling Enger. Nathan Samuel Renner. Matthew Meilenberg. Samantha Rosalie Nielsen, cum laude. Nicholas Lee Keith. Maddie Guides. Tracy Lynn Wilbur. Tori Lynn James. Rebecca Ann Watson. Elizabeth Ashley Williams. Theodore John Wiseman. Byron Rule Severinghaus. Eric James Walther. Stanton Jeffrey Nesbitt III, cum laude. Doreen Garcia Santa Maria. Emily Amanda Catherine Versdahl. Jack A. Mace. Michael Marvin Johnson. Zoya Isabella Susarte. Joshua John Adams. Alicia Sharon Wiley. Catherine Ann Schmitz. Brittany Genevieve Spangler. Amber Jasmine Tisdale. Hugh and Million Zudi. Amanda Danielle Stone. Alexander Smeedley. Amara Walsh. Macaulay Lynn Storer, magna cum laude. Natasha Leslie Slay. Mallory K. Thorpe. Sue 
Susan Marie Frazier. Christiana Renee Byerlin. Savannah Janae Wilson. Chelsea Ann Reddy. Ashley Ann Rossler. Kelsey Elizabeth McFarland. Timothy Chi. Marin Sharif. Ma Young. Leah Felice Hockman Voigt, magna cum laude. Anjung Jin, cum laude. Cynthia Shea Wilson. Matthew Philip Swanson. Please join me in congratulating these graduates from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Would the candidates for the College of Sciences and Technology please come forward? Cameron Frank Herbert. James David Niemeister. Michael David Bose. James Lewis Rasmussen. Christy E. Burgess, University Honors. Stephanie Nicole Langdon. Brian Scott Schexnader. Ryan Lee Dewey. Camera V. Ray. Andrew Howe Cole. Timothy James Tehan. Margaret Leflin Lynn. Grace Elizabeth Willard. Christopher Michael James Douglas. Laudick Walker Williamson, Jr., cum laude. Fiona Marie Felker. Cheryl Ann Emiko Hangagami Fijioka. Samuel Eldon Tripp. Bo Carrillo. Kyle Timothy Mickelson. Patrick M. Shelton. Logan James Altier. Daniel Weller. Jordan Roderick Bridges. Jeremy James Berger. Brandon, Brandon Richard Wass. Andrew Hermian. Jacqueline Marie Dunham. Zachary Max DeHeron. Casey R. Shane. William Joseph Ash, cum laude. Michaela N. Erickson. Erica Rose Bjorklund. Samuel Scar Scottheim. Paul Williams. Caleb Stephen Payne. Adam Shire. Travis Guy Walker. 
Brittany Renee Larrabee. Sarah Marie Noffet. Nicole Kim. Stephen Michael Peterson, University Honors. Morgan Ashley Gilchrist. Philip G. Konken. Natalie Ann Franz. Natalie S. Jones. Ian Duke. Wen Ching Leon. Jordan Rhett Mackey. Sean Hanford Finley. Ethan John Miller. Terrence Warren Wershing. Craig Stephen Brown. Ian Bugby. Gunnar Christian Goshnick. Would the graduates of the Colleges of Science and Engineering please sit down and please congratulate them. Thank you. Will the candidates of the College of Business and Economics please come forward? Damon Lee Michael Wanke. Matthew M. Perrado, Manya Cum Laude. Jordan Michael Goss. Austin Wiederspan, Manya Cum Laude. Tiffany Nicole Melling. Chen Dong. David Philip Lloyd. Macklin J. Bishop. Melissa Ann Soon Hee Grubin. Tierra Leanne Laxon. Hidden Young Lai. Laura Redman Rojinski. Daniel Glenn Durrance. Milad Rezvani. Rika Felice Dial. Sarah Khalid Nazir. Allison Grinberg. Eric Go. Quinlan Werter. Eric George Zisk. Nathan James Ekman. Garrett David Parker. Tanvir Singh Cabra. Daniel David Russell. Nicole A. Murray. Andrew Gordon Rockwell. Daniel J. Pershee. Mitch E. Lepo. Jordan Richard Steves. Kendall Camille Pickerel. Kelsey Marie Sardison. Justin Time Hartley. 
Connie Quo. Molly Renee Vogel. Michelle E. Addington, Manya Cum Laude. Emily A. Hankins Poole. Jody Leanne Smith, Cum Laude. Matthew Peter Hale, Manya Cum Laude. Jessica Baglio. Taylor Trey Knowles. Daniel Jacoby. William Robert Wisedeff. Alexandria Rochelle Farrell. Mia Christina Guevara Wright. Roxanne Marie Elwes. Kyle Frank Russell. Brian Earl Lomborg. Jeremy Justin Kearns. Megan Kieran Ellison, cum laude. Megan Jane Scott. Benjamin Austin Wilkening. Sebastian Cardona Card Cardenas, cum laude. Ian Edward Catalano. Brian Robert Calbo. Alexander Christopher Tank. Theodore Fry. Erica Kane Sai. Alicia Bazar, Manya Cum Laude. Chelsea Petkey, Cum Laude. Lynn Jamal Tabauer. Sarah Geneva Gelbach. Cassandra Monique Tevis. Jessica Hazelton. Christian Peter Jorgensen, cum laude. Alessandra Nicole Swain. David Blake Spencer. Brian Richard Young. Xiao Xiao Yi. Christopher Anthony Peterson. Nina Ha Nguyen. Fook Lee. Kenneth Spots. Andrew Mark Eldridge. Ryan Eugene Gaines. Weston Glenn Cheneau. Douglas Scott Williams. Michael D. Owen. Nicholas Philip Keough. Brian Sigmund. James David Villers. Stephen G. Fleischauer. Brendan M. Somerville. April E. Lindstrom, cum laude. Evan Wayne Hess. Paul Jeffrey Beeman, cum laude. Rajendra Reddy. Please join me in congratulating these graduates of the College of Business and Economics.
Will the candidates from the College of Fine and Performing Arts please come forward? Bethany Ann Fromong. Lauren Elise Hayes. Cheyenne Noel Rose. Adrienne Mavis Holt. Caitlin Elizabeth Williams. Allison Paige Avery. Stacy Nicole Williams. Shannon Eileen Murray. Natalia Marie Herod. James Francis Thomas McGrath. Please join me in congratulating these new graduates from the College of Fine and Performing Arts. Will the candidates from Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies and American Cultural Studies please come forward. Marie Christina Scow. James Mbare Gebre. Sarah Jean Sutton. Juliana May De Groot. Gadelia Hurtado. Kimberly L. Rudolph. Anne Cottrell. Bonifacio Sanchez and Molly Glenn Morrow. Please join me in congratulating these graduates of Ferryman College. Would the candidates from Huxley College of the Environment please come forward? Anna Herbel, Sarah Renee Marie Smith, Brendan Murphy McLean, Scott William Surin, Miles Abraham Borgen, Kelly Marie Martin. Benjamin Campen, Jacqueline Marie Ford, Cassidy Rose Stephenson, Scott Richard Kayser, Nicholas William Abraham, Matt Marcourt, Brianna Boylan Gibbs, Elizabeth Claire Weeks. Susanna Teresa Edwards. Danielle Stephen Caustic. Jamie Lee Liljeron. Kirsten Ona Miller. Jenna Kuzinski. Magna Cum Laude. Matt Sh 
Shimol Bristow Magna Cum Laude. Please join me in congratulating these new graduates from Huxley College of the Environment. Saving the best of the best for last. Will the candidates from the Woodring College of Education please come forward? Jill Joanna Knudsen. <laughs> Elizabeth Joy Bukes, cum laude. <laughs> Nalita C. Vela. <laughs> Mackenzie Marie Thomas. Cindy Park, Sarah Christina Grand Moffat, Rebecca Elizabeth De, De Julio, De Julio, Molly Ungren, Eileen Catherine Sather. Brittany Joy Vandegrind. <laughs> Gwyneth Bynan. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Davis. <laughs> Caitlin Ariel Mars. <laughs> Melissa Noel Mickelson. <laughs> Andrea Lindsay Hahn. Marika Miyuru, <laughs> Kylie Ziegler, <laughs> Christopher Thomas Mitchell, <laughs> Rachel Faye Ryan, <laughs> and Elizabeth Erickson, <laughs> Marie Annette Hunrud. Sari Amira Weinstein. <laughs> Reagan Renee Rowell. <laughs> Chelsea May Renkert. Aaron S. Hall. <laughs> Megan Gregerson. <laughs> Jenna Nicole Hall, cum laude. Emily Marley Kulditz. Kulditz. Marissa Ray Heigert. Colleen Roberta Fornia. Brianna Lee Sherritt. Allison Michelle Litz. Amanda Al Holden, magna cum laude. <laughs> Vanessa Ann Seeger, magna cum laude. Christopher Allen Miller. <laughs> Kyle Jameson Coe. <laughs> Justin Charles Schaefer. <laughs> Jess Matthew Case. Tanya, Tanya Ann Waller. Benjamin Alexander Harmon. Angie Marie Hall. Please join me in congratulating the graduates of the Woodring College of Education.
Let's express our pride in our graduates one more time. Thank you. I would like to express my appreciation to the many people who have worked long hours planning and implementing today's graduation ceremony. A special thanks to those who volunteered their time to serve in so many critical roles. I do ask the audience remain during the recession of the faculty and students to the traditional memorial walk ceremony. They will proceed toward the stage where the students will pass by the faculty and deposit their student ID cards or other memorabilia, poems, plans for the future, old parking tickets, <laughs> in a box which we will later seal and cement in the walkway in front of Old Main. After the completion of the memorial walk ceremony, graduates will meet their guests outside the lobby of the gym. Western Washington University music performance major Veronica Jensen will now lead us as we sing the alma mater. She will be accompanied by the Western String Quartet. Please join in. The words are on the back cover of the program. Please rise and remain standing for the alma mater until and until the recession of faculty and graduates is complete. Oh, <laughs> 